Why not just say she's getting fucked? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Seduce Me 2, and we are going to continue on with Eric's route after that creepy night where we saw in the last episode. I'm wondering, is that supposed to show the future? Like, it's not, it's not a good thing, is it? <laughs> okay. After I finally calmed down, Eric told me about what the boys had done. They took Eric to a cafe deep in downtown Chicago, just wanting to have a brother-to-brother -brother talk with him. I was happy I got to spend some time with them, but Eric had practically rushed home to return to me. The dream did not appear again that night. Eric used his powers to enter my dream to keep me safe from anything that had tried to hurt me, and thankfully nothing did. Well, that's good. However, there was a strange feeling in my gut that didn't sit right with me. For some reason, Eric's comfort didn't make me feel okay. Uh-oh. It was as if I didn't want him to be in my dreams. My heart knew this was a problem because I was unsure of how to respond to this feeling. Slowly as the days passed by our wedding approach, the feeling became more aggressive. Soon I was becoming irritated more easily. I became angry at the smallest things, the steps he took, the things he wear, the looks he gave me or what I assumed he had gave me. Is this because of the dream that whatever touched us? No, Eric, I don't want to do anything right now. Love, I didn't say any. You're looking at me with those... Sex eyes again. Sex eyes? I swear, I wasn't doing anything. Oops. I cut him off. Sex eyes? I swear, I wasn't doing anything of the sort. You're doing it now. I couldn't control the words that were flying out of my mouth. Something was wrong, but I continued to speak cruelly towards Eric. My heart was at odds with my mind, and I didn't know why I was doing it. But I continued to my barrage. Love. What is going on? No, I feel bad for Eric. Oh my god, can I just hug him? No, this is wrong. What's going on? You're what's- I'm sorry. No! I felt Eric's enthrallment take over my body, forcing me to go weak to my knees and mule and out in surprise. My mind stopped thinking about attacking Eric, and my heart felt entirely relieved that the urge was gone. Eric gently wrapped his arms around me, being sure to keep his arms around my shoulder, and rocked with me, trying to calm me down. Love, are you having doubts? I'm not! <laughs> what the fuck? What's happening? No, no, I'm not. I, I don't know what I... You swear you're not having doubts about us? Nope. No, Eric, I'm not. I promise. I was unable to speak the truth under his spell. It was strange. It was like I was under a curse when I was... It was like I was under a curse when I wasn't under his enthrallment. Somehow, despising every th little thing Eric did, yet I knew it wasn't true. I love everything about him, but my mind wouldn't agree. Oh no, this is gonna cause a problem. I gripped Eric's shirt, wanting to stay close and show my true feelings for him. Listen to me, okay? I love you so much. If you have any doubts on us getting married, then please, please just tell me. I don't know what's going on in your beautiful head. He's so sweet, even though this is like a very sad moment, like... I love you too. I really, really do. I don't know what's happening to me. It made no sense. Why did I despise Eric yet love him? My mind, heart, and body were at odds with each other, and I wasn't sure what to do. This went on all the way until our wedding day. Eric managed to deal with me the entire time, enthralling me when things became rough to keep me calm. The other incubi tried to decipher what was going on with me, but none of them could figure it out. He, Eric didn't, wouldn't think like it, it was like the dream that she had or something, no? I was gonna marry Eric, and then I was going to figure out what was wrong with me. I know I still love him with every inch of my heart, m mind, body, and soul, so feeling disdain like this was not natural for me. I asked Eric to place me under enthrallment for our wedding, in case I lash out again. He reluctantly agreed and stayed with me, stayed with me the morning of our wedding day. I was supposed to dress alone and be by myself, but I needed Eric to keep me in check. I felt ridiculously sly and fuzzy as I stood in the bathroom, having come out of the hot shower with Eric. Okay. We didn't do anything together. Okay, I was about to say, like, um, this is not the time. <laughs> Even though it's sad because we're getting married and it's supposed to be all, like, you know, sweet and stuff. Um, but he, but he remained close enough to keep me enthralled and remain energized enough to maintain the enthrallment. Eric gently ran my brush through my strands of hair, being as sweet as caring as he always was towards me. Because of the enthrallment, I felt each stroke and <laughs> so much pleasure from his brushing, it was hard not to moan. Well, love, 
Today's the big day. Yeah, I'm so happy. I truly hope so. I'm the happiest man alive to be able to soon call you my wife. Aww. I want to be your wife. I want, to, want you to be my husband. I felt like crying. Why did I have to be enthralled to say such things? I really loved him, but somehow I couldn't bring myself to say it without him casting a spell over me. This is so sad! What the fuck? Eric looked at me through the bathroom mirror and gently smiled, believing me, believing me and placing a small kiss on my cheek. By the way, are you using a new soap? What? <laughs> huh? I looked at Eric, unsure of what he meant. I had used the soap... I had used the same soap I always use, so my scent shouldn't have been different. Eric tilted his head and gently inhaled again before smelling a little while wider. You smell different. I kind of like it. This is bad! Oh no! I blushed, not because of the enthralment, but because I didn't know I had a different smell. Was that something... Was something off about me? It couldn't have been that drastic, right? Eric finished brushing my hair and smiled, kissing my head. Alright, time for you to get into your dress. I'm afraid that I can't join in dressing you as much as I want to. Can't see the bride in her gown before the wedding. I also have to get to the ceremony venue to get my tuxedo. However, my enthrallment should stay on you until you arrive. If you think so, Eric, I don't, I don't freaking know. I tried to fight back, but Eric held up his fingers. Uh, no, no. I promise that everything will be okay. As soon as I see you, I'll enthrall you again, and we can go through the ceremony as planned. Okay? This is sad if I has to do this for his, his, his wedding. It's so messed up. As much as I wanted to fight it, I was thankful that Eric was willing to go through all of this to make sure that I wouldn't throw a fit, despite me not wanting to in the first place. I agreed and earned a small kiss from him, which I relished. All right. I love you. I'll see you soon. Okay. I nodded, smiling back at him before he slipped on regular clothes and left the mansion. I felt the enthrallment on me ebb and flow through my body, so I needed to hurry and get ready before it wore off. I got dressed in the wedding dress of my dreams and smiled as I prepared my hair and jewelry. I really did look like a perfect bride, ready for her big day. Why I was acting out against it, I would never know, but I was going to fix this after I say I do. As I stared at myself, I could see a small glow around my body. Was it Eric's spell? I giggled, wrapping my arms around myself and enjoying the feeling of the spell on his arm. It's not, isn't it? This is I all- I knew it! I knew it! That girl has demon magic! Told you, it's not. Who are you? What the? Then quit talking and let's take her! The demon lord will be so pleased. Who? Before I could turn around to search for the voices, I felt ha hands grab a hold of my feet and I looked down and lifted up my dress. Two pairs of evil looking hands had taken a hold of my ankles, reaching through the dark and purple pentagram. I shrieked, trying to pull my legs away, but I couldn't stop them as they were swiftly pulling me into the ground. Great! I was pulling deeper into the darkness. I was no longer in my room. I was being dragged through a dark void, one I couldn't escape. I reached out and clawed from the darkness, trying to find something to grab onto. I tried to pull my legs away from the hands that were holding onto them, but couldn't pull free. What was going on? Why was this happening? Someone help me! As if I screamed- As if someone had heard my screams, I suddenly felt the hands let go and disappear, leaving me to float in the darkness that they left me in. I shut my eyes. Please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream! <laughs> I finally felt the surface under my feet as I collapsed into it, my body curling on itself from it- from the experience I had. I didn't dare tear my eyes away from my- uh, no, no, no. I didn't dare tear my eyes away from my lap, not ready to get, get up just yet. The voice I heard, however, made my heart stop. You! What are you doing here? Diana! I looked up, finally having the courage to take in my surroundings. My heart stopped beating from the moment seizing my heart. Um... Uh, hi! This is awkward. Look at Diana's face! Oh my god. I looked up seeing five figures, strangers, monsters, being that I didn't have recognized. They all looked down at me in surprise, as if I had dropped at a very bad time. One man looked like an orc from a fantasy game without the tusk. He had a broken horn and very frightened aura around him as he stared at me. The other male was lanky in comparison, more human-like, but I could almost feel power animating from his him regardless. Huh. One of the women who was staring at me had rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. They twitched on top of her head and she, as she looked at me and gripped her staff. 
She seemed harmless, yet she had animal ears. Hang on. Great. The one creature that I couldn't discern the sex of seemed to be more excited to see me than surprised. What freaked me out about them was that they had wings sticking out from their back, and they were floating. The last woman, however, sent alarm bells in my head as I looked at her surprised face. Her hair, her eyes. Diana! I don't know what I was saying. As she stared, the woman turned her body towards me in recognition to the name I called her. It was her. What are you doing here? Yo, I don't even know. I just got pulled through the ground, like. Diana walked towards me and stared down at me. It was odd. She didn't look at me. She didn't look like a human, yet I was afraid of her demon form as it towered over me. I was more in shock at what was going on. Um, okay. Before Diana could speak further, most likely to repeat herself, a figure quickly stepped up and bowed to her, kneeling beside me. My lady, please forgive me. I felt something moving between our worlds and assumed the demon lord was to blame, so I intercepted his summoning of this human. You. So I wasn't the only one who felt the change in the air. Uh, Diana stared at the man kneeling beside me as I kept my eyes up at her. As she turned her gaze back to me, I, gu I gulped silent. I gulped silently. What was she gonna do with me? This felt wrong. I was about to be married. I was about to live a happily ever after with the man that I loved. Now I, was, I, now I was in a place I didn't know with Diana and a bunch of other creatures I didn't recognize. My instinct was to... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Let me see. We gotta play it smart. I don't want to get a bad ending. So... I feel like we should stay still. Just not do anything bad. I couldn't move. My mind was empty of emotions except for fear. Why was this still... Why was this happening? Where was I? Why was Diana here? Diana stared down at me before sighing and kneeling down to my level. As she settled onto her knees, I leaned away from her, unsure of what she would do. Was she going to kiss me again and take my energy? Knowing her, maybe. Can you tell me what happened? Why are you being nice? What is happening? What the fuck? I didn't want to speak. I felt no courage to. My mind was so wrapped around that the the the. the my mind was so wrapped around this chaos that I felt nothing but fear and anxiousness. This couldn't have been happening. I was dreaming. If you remember and seduce me once, she was a total bitch. A crazy one. And this is weird that she's nice. Is she okay? I don't think so. This is a waste of our time. Just kill her or something. Yes, because that's a smart thing to do. Kill someone who is clearly traumatized and has done nothing to deserve death. Brilliant idea. Bravo. Okay, I like that guy. He seems nice. Diana continued to stare at me, waiting for me for waiting for me to answer. Why? She didn't cast a spell on me, nor did she attack me. She continued to wait and stare. Slowly, my mind began to sink into the situation. Diana was willing to listen. Was she willing to help? That was another question, but first I had to answer her. My voice didn't want to answer still, so I forced myself to nod, wanting to answer her somehow. Diana smiled softly, which conflicted my memories of her. She never smiled like that, yet she was now. Why is she smiling? What? Are we like in another timeline? What is this? Diana held onto my hand, ushering me to take it. Can you stand? I nodded and took her hand, standing up at last. I looked at the other beings in the room. They all kept their gaze on me, unsure of what to do or say. Diana, however, led the conversation. First, can you tell me what happened to you? I took a breath, recounting everything that had happened. I was about to go to the church and be married, and then... That's kind of... Okay. That's kind of... I just find it funny because, you know, we're getting married to a demon in a church. Just think about that for one second. <laughs> I was attacked by this darkness. A couple of hands grabbed my legs and pulled me into it, and I fell here. A shadow summoning. Diana turned to one of the beings, the lanky male, and glared. One of yours couldn't have. On my honor, it wasn't any of mine. We have nothing to gain from kidnapping a human, nor do we know who this woman is, anyhow. My lady, if I may, I clearly remember hearing imp demons in the void along with her. It must have been the demon lord's henchman. Isn't that like the, that short guy that was hanging out with like the, the brother's like father? Is that who that is? <sighs> Those damnable creatures. That explains it. Diana crossed her arms and looked at me again. Well, dear? It seems that you were to be either a new harem girl for the demon lord to ravish, or bait for the boys to return to their father's side. Either way, 
I doubt you would have lived long had the demon lord gotten his hands on you. Jesus. A violent shiver ran up my spine. Was it true? I would have died? Wait a minute. This girl knows about the demon lord's heirs? Yes. Hilariously enough, she was set to marry one of them, as you can see from her garb. As Diana motioned towards my dress, I realized how vulnerable I was and felt extremely self-conscious. I wrapped my arms around myself as Diana let out a sigh. Well, since you do not belong here, the obvious thing to do is to send you home. Why is she so nice? This is so weird! I couldn't help but stare wide at Diana. She was really gonna send me home? Really? I couldn't believe my ears. I can't either! This is so weird! You'll really send me back? Of course. It should be easy to do once everything is in order. It'll be like you never left the human world. Wait, like I never left the human world? What do you mean by left the human world? Diana stared before chuckling softly and ge gesturing to the room and beings with it. Dear, do you not realize where you are? You are in the demon world. Dun dun dun! dun, dun. I thought this was obvious too, okay? My character didn't realize, huh? My mind went blank. It couldn't be. I couldn't be in the demon world. No way. No way in hell. You are in hell. I felt myself back up against the wall behind me, suddenly afraid. I was in another world? How? That was impossible. Diana stepped towards me, both of her hands softly trying to show me she meant no harm as she positioned them in front of her body. Do not panic. We will send you back now, so there's nothing to worry about. Uh... How will you power the spell? Bringing someone here is no easy task. But sending someone back consumes much more energy. Great. I'll use what energy I have now and rest. We can organize the siege another time when I fully recover. It's not like the Demon Lord can escape the corner we've trapped him in. So we do have some time to spare. You'd waste time and energy on this human. We must strike now while the Demon Lord is weakened. But the human doesn't belong here. She needs to go home. Uh... Shall I prepare the return spell? Do. I grant you permission to use my energy to power the spell. With a nod, the lengthy man held out a hand towards the wall. I looked over in the direction it was aimed at. Diana's shadow. I watched as Diana's shadow simply stood against the wall, mirroring the movements of the real succubus in the room. Before my eyes, the shadow began to morph and expand on the, wa on the wall on its own. <laughs> <sighs> the hell is happening? I looked back to Diana to see her wrapping or her arms around herself and curling, curling her shoulders over it, as if it was in pain. Her nails embedded themselves into her forearm, and I could barely make out a painful hiss escape her clenched teeth. Was this spell hurting her that badly? I turned back to the wall to see Diana's shadow shaking and vibrating as if it was re resisting the change the man was forcing it on. You will obey my command. Open the gates to the void and allow passage to the world we seek. Transitum per renan peto tenibris. Ubi aperiut. Niano yo. Desedir. Okay. Upon Diana's final word, her shadow burst and expanded into an oval-shaped doorway. I stared wide at it as the passage before my, a hand placed itself on my shoulder, forcing me to look over. The one with the spear gently pressed my shoulder forward and looked down at me with almost a stern face. You must leave now. The faster you leave, the quicker we can close the void. Uh, go! Go! Go get married! Okay. I nodded and lifted the bottom of my dress, stepping forward to make a run for the passageway. However, before I could bolt towards... However, before I could bolt towards my freedom, a snarl echoed through the room. How dare you interfere with my summoning! What the heck is happening? At that very moment, Diana began to scream, arching her spine and throwing her head back. Around her body were red tint bolts of lightning, flashing and shocking her form. No! Human, use the passage! Now! Okay! He didn't have to tell me twice. I bolted towards the portal, diving forward as I neared it, but I was forced back in a burst of energy of flash of red light. I fell to the floor, almost slamming my head onto the stone. What the- a human will never, ever leave this world alive! You spineless worm! Close the portal! 
The demon lord might get through! But the human... Close it! <laughs> As commanded, the man pulled his hand back, visually forcing my arm back behind his body, and Diana's shadow quickly became began to morph back into a simple shadow. The electricity around Diana faded away as she began to tip forward. The man with the spear dropped his weapon and caught Diana in his arm, trailing her to his body as he panted and gasped for air. As she panted and gasped for air. I don't sense the demon lord anywhere. The worm has to scurry through the shadows to try and fight back. He'll be dead soon enough. How is she, guard? Diana seemed to be look uninjured, but her body was twitching from the aftermath of the magical af attack. Her visible eye was shut tight as she dug her fingers into the guard's jacket to cling to him. As her eye opened, I saw not a blood ruby red color, but I saw a cold and unfriendly gold color paint over her iris. Her mouth opened as she panted for air. I see a hunger in her facial expression, but she continued to stare at the wall, not wanting to make on eye contact with anyone. There are no physical wounds, but she's been weakened. I must give her my energy so she can recover. What the hell is happening? <laughs> I'm so confused. The man swiftly moved and hooked an arm around underneath Diana's knees, lifting her up bridal style as she, cl as she clung to his jacket, shivering. The spear that had fallen to the floor faded into black and purple mist as he quickly left the room with her in her his arms. My mind, however, began to panic. I couldn't go home? Why was I being forced to stay? Damn the demon lord, this wasn't right! There's an imp in the castle. That is the only way the demon lord could have been able to interfere. You! Guards by the door! Hunt it down! A pair of guards that were apparently by the door saluted the one commanding and then ran off. I felt at a place, alone, terrified as to what was going to happen. The demon lord wanted me here, and his words pounded in my mind. How was I going to get home? Would I be able to go home? Oh god. We're gonna die here, aren't we? Hey. No! Oh no, I feel really, like, really sad now. We'll get you home, okay? Um, Diana just needs a little rest, okay? She needs more than rest. She needs to use a different spell to send her back. The Demon Lord will expect her to use the Shadow Spell again. How about the normal way? I'm sure we can connect to a witch or even the warlock she used before to reopen a portal to the human world. The warlock she used to get to the human world died, remember? And he was the most powerful warlock in the human world. Practically a god himself. What other human could be used to open a portal without another human dying? It was merely a suggestion. The faster we get this human home, the faster we can move on and finish off the demon lord. Well, what are we going to do with the human now? We can give her a room to rest in. Humans need sleep, after all. Oh, this is really Maybe weird. by the time she wakes up, we'll think of a solution. Well, okay, we don't know the gender of that demon. So, at least they're being nice, so, oh. you know. Okay. The woman with the rabbit ears looked down at me and lowered her hand to me, inviting me to take it. She had a kind of but concerned expression on her face, so I trusted her. I slowly took her hand and began to stand up as a... As the fairy figure brushed off a small patches of dust that I accumulated on my dress, I was forced to listen to the beings around me because there were there was nothing else I could do. Without them, I couldn't get home. My heart ached, but I had accepted my predicament. Oh my god! And then we left Eric at the altar. This is so sad and messed up. What the heck? Here, I'll bring you to the open ambassador's room. You are free to rest there for now. Um, what about Diana? The floating person giggled softly as the woman with the rabbit ears cleared her throat. She'll be fine. She's being taken care of right now. What does that mean? Why not just say she's getting fu- <laughs> Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> I understand. Now I completely forgot that she was the succubus. <laughs> and the brute strikes again with the lack of tasteful filtering between his brain and his mouth. You still have yet to prove me wrong about my expectations of you. Oh my Keep god. Keep testing me, assassin. I'm not afraid to rip your spine out of your body and use it as a back scratcher. What the heck? You can very well try, brute. Ugh! Would you both knock it off? Come. Everything will be taken care of. 
Before I could protest, the woman led me out of the room into the hall. I kept my eyes down, trying to take in more of the situation I was in. I was trapped in the demon world, and Diana was out of commission. The demon lord had plans for me. But it, what exactly was he aiming for? To kill me? To, like, lure the boys back, I assume. And Diana's, you know, getting busy. I could have had, I could have been bait. I could have been revenge. I didn't know, nor could I figure it out. At least I was safe. At least I hope I was safe. The woman led me to a room that practically screamed medieval fantasy. Everything was clean, yet it still had that old age feel, as if no one had ever stepped foot in the room until that moment. Best well. here for now. When Diana is well again, we can discuss what to do. Thank you. I nodded to the woman before she gent gently curtsied and left, closing the door behind her. I took a moment to observe my surroundings, interested in what understanding the aesthetics. This was fantasy turned into reality. It was like I had gone back in time. Da, 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 da. I don't know why I chose Game of Thrones to <laughs> start singing. Why, though? Was the demon really that behind in, in the time? Despite the situation I was in, which was beyond heartbreaking and terrible, my curiosity began to fester my mind, as if I was given an older golden opportunity to learn something new. However, my thoughts began to drift, as I felt myself becoming weak and dizzy, no doubt from the shock and trauma I had gone through. I stumbled towards the bed, needing to sit down and let everything settle without passing out. As my rear hit the mattress, however, I let out a small, pleasurable sigh. Holy crap, this is a comfy mattress! It looks really soft from the, <laughs> from the drawing there. I felt myself fall back, and my entire body simply melted into the softness beneath my body. It was like I was sleeping on a cloud. Was that possible? The demon magic m may have had something to do with it, but I was certain that I was drifting into almost blissful sleep just by laying onto the, blank onto the blankets of the mattress. Not caring that I was in my, my dress, I closed my eyes and drifted to sleep. I needed to rest, since Diana wasn't available for a while anyway. Okay, we're gonna end the episode here, and everything... I... I'm just, I'm just like, really confused as to why the demon lord wants... Um, our character. Let me know in the comments what you think. Why? And what what is happening with Diana? I'm so confused. Why is she so nice to me? It's like really weird because she's like the she was like the biggest bitch in Seduce Me One. And I, I feel really bad for Eric because we had to pretend to be in love with him and then we got taken away. This is just like the feels are starting to hit this early. Oh my goodness. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode of Seduce Me Too, remember to leave a like and a comment. Let me know that you guys enjoyed this. Share it with everybody that you know. Just, you know, just tell them that cute demon boys are involved and then, you know, maybe someone will come and watch it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!